This is the Widgeon's model airplane kit. It's a rubber-powered free-flight airplane. The kit comes with laser-cut balsa wood parts and everything else you need to build it, except for the tools and glues. All the pieces are identified with a number so they match with the plans and instructions. I'll proceed to build it, but first I need to prepare all my tools, starting by using a new blade in my hobby knife. You can use any other similar blades or knives to use in this project. I also recommend using a metal ruler to make straight cuts. I recommend using this glue, but you can also use CA or white glue. You'll need sandpaper at least two different grids, baking paper to protect the plants, tweezers to deal with the smaller parts, castor oil to protect our rubber band, pins to attach things to the table, a set of pliers to bend the landing gear wire, easy dope for the covering but you can replace this with white glue, and a small brush. And these are all the tools we will need for this build. Of course you can replace the easy dope and the glue, but I recommend using the ones that I'm showing now. So let's get started with this build. If you're wondering where to find this kit, you can find it in the description below or in the information tab that you see on the screen. That link will take you to our online store, where we're finally selling this kit. Let's start cutting the pieces and extend the plans. I recommend using a sheet of foam board or any other foam underneath the plans to nail the pins. The plans are an important tool to illustrate and guide our process, so let's extend it along the table and start cutting the pieces. Although the pieces are already laser cut, you need a knife to make the extraction easier. It can happen that the wood is very hard and you have to use your knife to help release the pieces. In that case you have to be very patient and not to break the parts, especially the small ones. But, to facilitate the extraction of these pieces, I recommend retracing the cut on the other side, if the cut line is visible. Then we can start aligning the parts on top of the plan, so you can identify which ones are which. And so we start building it. We're going to start with these fuselage formers. The first step is easy and is to reinforce the formers with these little balsa wood sticks of 2 by 3 millimeters and pay attention to the details on the plan that will show you on which side it will end up being. I use a quick sanding to get rid of imperfections on the edges and since I'm going to start using the glue I'm going to protect the plans. Now I'm going to place the formers where they belong. And I use a square piece to align everything. When I glue the second wall of the fuselage, I put some weight and let it dry. Normally the glue UHU will take about 20 to 30 minutes to dry, but it could take a little bit longer to really really harden. Now I'm going to glue the last formers, the one that goes at the rear and the front of the fuselage. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to glue these little square pieces that will hold some sticks and these sticks are to hold a secondary rubber band to hold the propeller. Similar sticks will be on the fuselage to hold the rubber bands to secure the wings. Now let's make the landing gear. First of all, let's identify the midpoint. From there, we're going to follow the plan to make the bends. After finishing the shape, we're going to bend it a little bit forward as is shown in the plan. Now we're going to glue the landing gear on the fuselage and we're going to need these reinforcements that will go in front and on the rear of the former. Remember to apply enough glue. Now I'm going to keep gluing the pieces where they belong. We still need to do some work on the fuselage, but it's almost done. For now I'm going to wait for the glue to set and I'm going to start working on the wings. First we have to separate the spars, leading and trailing edges. Of course you need the wing ribs and then you start placing all the pieces on top of the plan. We're going to finish the wings later. For now, I'm going to finish the fuselage. By the way, I'm going to glue these sticks on the sides of the fuselage. These are going to hold the rubber bands to secure the wings. Now is the turn of the stabilizer. I'm going to mark where I have to bend it to make a V-shape. Again, I'm using the plan as a guide. And this paper template is going to be very handy to measure the angle of the V-shape. After the landing gear glue has set, we can put now this 5mm piece on the fuselage.
pieces number 6, 7 and 8 go glued together as a sandwich. And this little square piece also go glued to the back of the other pieces. The hole has to be aligned because that's where we're going to put our propeller and that's where the bushing will be. Then some sanding is required to round the edges of the stabilizer and to make it more aerodynamic. If you draw some lines in the center of the stabilizer, it will be easier to align it to the fuselage. And here we can see a close-up to see all the details of this stabilizer and also some other parts of the fuselage. The fuselage is almost done, it just needs some details. But now I have to work with the propeller. As you can see the propeller is not balanced. I'm going to use a small grid sandpaper to get rid of the imperfections. And then I'm going to use some electrical tape to balance the weight. I'm going to stick a little bit of that tape on the lighter blade. And it's just a matter of adjusting the amount of tape you put in there so it can balance the weight. And there it is. It seems to be balanced now. And now we have to join the propeller to the nose of the airplane. Is the piece we were building earlier but I recommend doing that after you sand off all the edges, but I did it before. Now we have to finish the fuselage by placing the rest of the bits and pieces. Now we let the glue set in the fuselage. Meanwhile, we're going to start building the wings. Building the wings is a very straightforward process. Just make sure to have all the parts you need and then start laying them down on top of the plan. Make sure to align them to the drawings and that you are building on a very flat surface. I first make sure of the position of all of the parts and then I start building it.
As you can see, I'm using wood glue. It will take longer to dry, but it gives me time to align all the ribs and all the parts. The same glue is applied on the slit of each rib to then glue the spar. This wood white glue will take about 24 hours to fully cure. So meanwhile we're gonna finish the details on the fuselage, like sanding the edges. After about 4 to 6 hours, the glue is hard enough to start working on the details of the wings. I'm going to sand the trailing edge to make it more aerodynamic, and then of course the tip of the wing and the leading edge. And finally we join the wings together as indicated in the plans. And so we have to give them the right dihedral. For that I'm going to cut a piece of balsa wood that will serve as a stand at the right height. The height is indicated in the plans and is 50 millimeters on each wing. And now all the structures of the airplane are built. Now try to test fit the wing on the fuselage and make the adjustments. Before making the tissue covering, I'm going to apply some easy dope to the wood. This will create a protective coat, and when it's dry we have to sand it. It also makes the wood a bit stronger, and it won't absorb as much humidity as it would without the coating. The sanding has to be done with a very light grit sandpaper, and very carefully, because this structure is very fragile. Patience is advice. And now I'm going to start with the tissue covering process. The first step is to lay down the tissue and to cut the sheets the same shape as the wing, just leaving 5mm or so on the edges. And now I'm going to apply easy dope on every surface the tissue is going to contact with. Then you put the paper and make sure there is no wrinkles. Remember that you can replace the easy dope in this step with white glue diluted with water. The process repeats with each layer you apply. When we finish covering all the lower surfaces, we are going to trim the excess
the excess edges on the top surface covering are not cut, but they're folded inwards to be glued on top of the lower surface. That way it seals the covering. The next thing we have to do is apply water to the tissue paper. This will make it shrink once it's dry. We're going to apply the water using some spray gently. Also and very important, we're going to just apply water to one wing at a time. This is to avoid any warping once they are dry. And that's why we're going to suspend it few millimeters above the table with these tabs. Also to avoid the warping, we're going to fix down the wing with some weights and we wait until it's dry. After a few hours, one wing is ready, so we go and do the same to the other. You can accelerate the process with some hair dryer, but you cannot force it because the result is going to be a warp wing. So my recommendation is to have some patience and do it the right way. Once the other half of the wing is ready, you can see the result. There is a lot of tension on the surface of the covering, and that's what we were looking for. And we're going to finish this process with another coat of Easy Dope. This will reinforce the paper, make it shiner, and protect it from the elements. After this coating, once again we have to let it dry, and this is the final result. Remember that if you don't have easy dope, you can use the white glue, but the result will be different. You can also use some spray lacquer on top of the covering to achieve similar results. And as a final step for the wings, I'm going to cover this middle part with paper. I'm using orange color. We make the last fitting test and we adjust with a knife or some sandpaper. And that's done. And then is the moment to cover the fuselage the same way we did with the wings.
You can also cover the stabilizer, but I prefer to leave it like that. And now I'm going to cut the plastic to make the cut pit canopy. Securing the wheels in place is very easily done with some paper and some CA glue. And now let's make some treatment to the rubber band of our airplane. This is our motor. And if we want it to endure more flights, we have to apply some castor oil. The rubber band comes with a nut already made, so you don't have to do it yourself. In the fuselage, where we use a stick to secure the rubber band in place, we're going to leave uncovered a small part on the underside of the fuselage. That will allow us to reach there and secure the rubber band. The oil will make the rubber slip better and will make it stand more friction and fatigue. And now we have to put it in place. You can use a tool like a wire with a hook. And now we have to adjust the center of gravity of our airplane, or its balance. This is an extremely important step if you want to make it fly. So you have to suspend the airplane by the points marked on the wings and start adding weight on the nose. I'm using some coins for that. The way it looks now, it seems to be balanced. So now we have to glue the weights permanently inside the fuselage. Take into consideration that you might have to adjust the balance later. That's why we have to test it in flight. And that's right, our airplane is ready, so now we can go out and fly it. The first flights we're going to do with this airplane are going to be very simple. We're just going to give it about 20 to 50 turns and then throw it. We just need to know how it glides. And as you can see in these first flights, the airplane is tail heavy. So after adding a little bit more weight, this is how it flies. Normally the number of turns that we can give to this rubber band and this propeller is about 200 to 500 turns. In this first flight I only use about 100 to 200 turns, so that's why it didn't fly that much. In upcoming videos I can explain how to trim these airplanes very well so they can fly perfectly. For now I hope you learn a lot in this video and I'll see you in the next project.